That's right, everybody. The golden nectar of the gods. Welcome them again to another episode of Psycho's Platters, always part of the coffee, each and every time that is the mighty Psycho promise, always and forever, amen. So I know I'm a little early again today, um, several different reasons. Number one, you know, I have been like extremely tired. I, I feel a little off today, but I wanted to at least do an hour show, so we're going to shoot for that. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? You know, it's almost alternating now between you and AZ Mick, whoever is the first one on here. And that's just fine by me. So uh, I hope everybody is having themselves a decent uh, 17th of February. We got done with VD Day. Huh? Uh, hope nobody caught any. Oh, boy. Uh, but uh, it was pretty non-eventful uh, over in, in uh, my neck of the woods. Uh, boy, oh boy, did I sell a lot of stuff, though. Oh, oh it was crazy. That combined with Super Bowl, oh, that the week was nuts. I'll tell you that right now. I'm glad it's over. And uh, I don't know. Like I said about Super Bowl, I can kind of give two shits, but I guess I was leaning more towards KC anyway, uh, even though my Bears weren't in it. But we got a number one draft pick, and that's good. Hopefully, we'll get we'll get something smart. Um, for two seconds on, on Chicago Bears, uh, three Chicago Bears are going in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm pretty happy about this, to be honest with you. Um, Steve McMichael, Mongo, he is, oh, is he having a hard time? He has, uh, let's see, I think it's ALS. Yeah, or something like that. I think he's got ALS. And uh, I met him once. He was really, really cool. This was like way before the wrestling years remember when remember when he was a member of the four horsemen although i really don't count him as a member of the four horsemen sorry mongo i you kind of like stuck out like a sore thumb i digress i was hoping that uh maybe just maybe today i would have tried i was going to drive to harrison arkansas and try to go meet uh wwf hall of famer cowboy bob orton but you know what guys i I don't want to, I mean, I just don't feel like I got a lot left in the tank, if you know what I mean. Today, I'm surprised I got the running around that I could. I tried to take, I tried to get some rest. That didn't work. So, I don't know. Needless to say, we got a lot to talk about. We do have some vinyl finds. I'll be, uh, there's some new and old vinyl finds. These are the more... A little bit older vinyl finds. And then I got some brand spanking new vinyl finds, which we will save that for next episode. Boy, oh boy. But these ones here, they're pretty neat. I will tell you that. Um, let's go Let's go through the CD finds first, though. Okay. CD finds. But before we even do that, and they're like, Psycho, will you go and be organized? No. New subs. New subs. Thank you to the ones that joined the Psycho Platter Network. That's right, the Psycho Network. Uh, Piccolina the Cat, uh, PRS Records, that's all capitalized. Rediscovering the Beatles, which is new to me. Uh, go, you know, and Chinendo 58, Chinetto 58, and Elvin M Macy, Masai, M A S I H. All new people to the Psycho Network. Thank you very much for, for subbing. Please like and subscribe to Psycho's Pliers so you can be in the know when I do stuff. Um, so, yeah, we'll do that also. Uh, we're going to dedicate this episode to two people. One a little more personal and then a music death, okay? So, uh, as far as for the personal friend, I want to dedicate this episode to my now belated high school friend, Linda Cusick. Uh, I, I just found out this past week that she died, but a lot of us, you know, from the same high school, you know, the same class, um, we didn't know that she died in late August. I'm like, and we only find out about this, you know, shortly before Valentine's Day. I'm like, what the heck? But, um, so we're going to dedicate this episode to her. She's, she was an awesome lady. Awesome. Um. 
and uh, all kinds of music. She liked her hard rock, heavy metal. I remember that when we were in high school. Uh, and then uh, the music related death for today, or excuse me, uh, earlier in the week, Ron Gilbert, bass player for the Blues Magoos. He was there from 1964 to early 1969. He passed away this week also. So uh, we're dedicating this episode to them. CD Find. Just two. 50 cents. Couldn't screw this up if I wanted to. And I kind of sort of feel like I slightly got away with it too. You'll find out. So get this. 1988. All right. 88. Although this was released in 96, but the show is from 1988. It's a double CD, and if you couldn't read it, it says, because it's, it's purposely made to look weird, Reunion Blues Band, Muddy Waters Band Members Reunite, a tribute to Buddy Waters back home to Clarksdale. That's right. Here's the front. Here's the back. Uh, and this was all recorded one night, all right, over one night. Now, let me read briefly, if I can get in there here. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> April 21st, 1988, two significant events occurred in the cradle of the blues, Clarksdale, Mississippi. One was ZZ Top's dedication of a guitar made from a board from Muddy Waters' home to the Delta Blues Museum. Of equal significance were the incredible performances turned in by the original Muddy Water Blues Band at John Molehead's Cotton Exchange Club. No overblown concert to mark the event, rather two authentic juke joint shows by a special group of players, the likes of which invented the genre. This two CD set was distilled from those historic performances. Be warned. You're going to hear crowd noise, clinking glasses, missed notes, and feedback. You're going to hear fade in and fade outs, mainly because the original recording devices were not always operating at the right time. Now, remember, this is April of 88, okay, that this was done. But mostly, what you'll hear is the real, visceral, there's a scrabble word, expression of blues masters in its most powerful, unadulterated form. Get ready to sweat. Now, I know maybe you're asking, maybe you're not. Who the hell's on this CD, Paul? The biggest known name for me is Pine Top Perkins. Uh, I mean, he's got, all these guys are gone too, if I remember correctly. They're all dead too. But Pine Top Perkins, uh, he was on piano. You got Louis Myers on guitar, Mojo Buford on harmonica and vocals, Bob Stroger, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, on bass, and Ted Harvey on drums. Yes. This was on the Ice House Records label, and uh, fun. I can't wait to listen to this. I mean, basically, I'll, tell, I'll spit this out really quick. So Pine Top Boogie, almost lost my mind. High heel sneakers. My little all in all, heart fang. For you, my love, baby, what you want me to do. After hours, blues with a feeling and hold it. That's disc one, disc two. I got my mojo working. Who doesn't like that song? That's a that's a staple. Ida V, another old school staple. Caledonia, another old school staple. Lend me your love. Crying shame. Everything's going to be all right. Mojo's Jomo. Say that five times fast while you're drunk. Going down slow. How long and just a little bit. That's right. So you got here. I mean, seriously, a lot of long songs and a lot of quickies. I said quickies. So you've got Muddy Waters Reunion Blues Band, released in 96, recorded in April of 88. This next one is a little interesting also. So this was released in 2001. Okay. Now, was this some of the final performances of a former Beatle? Maybe. I, I, I'm still trying to look into that, to be honest with you. Hang on, I'm sorry. Hmm. All right. Anyways, 2001. Could this be some of the final recordings of 
a light beetle. Maybe, based that this was released in 2001, okay, and I know that George was working on Brainwashed until he died, but we're talking about Ravishankar Bridges. That's right, the best of. Here's the front. Here's the back. This is a, this is the slip case, okay? Then you've got this. And uh, let me tell you, you see, George is on a bunch of these songs. He's not on every song. But um, there's, like, very long story on all of this. But, you know, you've got... You've got several different producers on this thing, okay? So, but basically, George is on five of these tracks along with uh, Al Cooper. Yeah, that Al Cooper. And Patrick O'Hearn. And if that name doesn't sound familiar to you, that's okay. But he originally got started. He was the bass player for Missing Persons. And he would veer off into the jazz world. Go figure. So on those tracks, you've got, like I said, you've got George Harrison, Al Cooper, Patrick O'Hearn, Ray Cooper on percussion. Some really interesting, cool stuff here. I have not listened to this. I cannot wait to listen to this, actually. Ravi is probably one of the few that uh, for Indian raga that I can deal with. Because what I'm saying by that is, is that you kind of almost have to be in the proper frame of mind, seriously, because they go on very long. Ragas can go on very long. This is the gentleman that opened up for George Harrison in 1974 for that ill-fated tour. Ravi opened up for George on that whole tour. Some of the audiences were kind some of them were starting to boo right in the middle of his set, which that's just rude, okay? I, yeah, whatever. It says, I love Ravi. Never heard that album. Patrick was in it. Thank you. That's right. I forgot because if I remember right, um, most of that band in that lineup, so Patrick O'Hearn, Terry Basio, and Dale Basio, uh, all were in Zappa's band, I think, at the same time. And that's, you know, they broke off and did Missing Persons. Who was the, I'm trying to think who the guitar player was in that band. Because there was four of them, and for the life of me, I don't remember who played guitar for Missing Persons. Um, late 70s, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Because I think um, Missing Persons got started in 80 or 81, I, I, you know what? She's got a goofy voice, okay? But I actually like it. I think my favorite song is Words. Do you hear me? Do you care? I mean, I just love that whole, that whole bunch there. You know, Terry did a killer job on drums. Patrick's laying down the bass. Um, if I remember right, Dale still kind of maybe goes out as missing persons, and she's got... Oh, who is it? It's Prescott Niles from the Knack is her bass player. At least last time I checked, I'm going, how weird is that? You know, that you've got him in this. He's the only surviving member of the Knack, and he's playing with missing persons. So those are the CD finds. Now, I know maybe you're thinking to yourself and, you know, Psycho's an idiot. Psycho comes up with these very weird video titles. I've been doing this a lot now because I like doing it. It's fun. So, let's break this down a little bit. I titled this video, Song, Songbird and a Backstreet Crawler. <laughs> yeah. So, here's, here's part one of that title. And now, these few albums... Um, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I, it was like about, it came out to about slightly over two a piece. Not too bad, I think, anyway. But the songbird part, of course, is the 1984 solo album Christine McVie, right? Here's the front, here's the back. Lots of fun people are on this album. Now, I could have sworn, and I could be wrong on this, and if you're a Mega Fleetwood Mac fan, let me know if I'm right or wrong on this. But the single that came, you know, 
other, other than got a hold on me. All right. Love will show us how. Now, one of those two, if I remember originally, might have been recorded in demo form for Mirage, but never used, which I'm just going, hmm, that's too bad, because Fleetwood Mac would have had another hit on their hands. Hi, John. Hi, Paul. It's cold today here in the 20s and had snow yesterday, one to two inches. Well, look at, yeah, look at you on that one. Now, today, uh, it is a cold day for us, too, but we do have sun. Last time I checked here, let's take a peeky. I was looking at yeah, current, currently 34 degrees in northwest Arkansas. Um, but it's going to jump to mid-50s tomorrow. And then it's supposed to be 70 by like Wednesday, Thursday. So it's going to be really goofy. So a lot of people are on this thing, okay? Um, let me run down the little list. Here's here's your here's your neat little inner sleeve. Yeah, this this definitely this album has been by a well a little bit water damaged, okay? But this is the cheapest one out of the bunch. I only paid a buck for this one, but the but the vinyl's clean. So basically, let's start with your band for a second, shall we? So you got Christine McVie, as we know, Todd Sharp, who's on guitar. He also co-wrote a bunch of these songs. Hi, Mike. How you doing? How's the girly? How's Florida? You going there soon? Uh, George Hawkins. George Hawkins uh, also played bass on Fleetwood Mac's The Visitor LP from 1981, 82, somewhere around there. And then Steve Barone. And Steve Barone used to be with the Average White Band. So that's who her band is. Now, as far as for the extra goodies here, <laughs> I think that slide seats. I like that. The Sidewinder sleeps tonight. So additional musicians on this bit of fun. How about, of course, this isn't going to be a surprise, but Lindsey Buckingham. Lindsey Buckingham is on the first Christine McVie solo album. Uh, he is on one, two, three four, five, six. So six out of the ten tracks, okay? Um, basically, he is on Gotta Hold On Me, so you've got two members of Fleetwood Mac, you know, for that one. Uh, Eric Clapton does a track on here. Uh, he plays lead guitar on The Challenge, and uh, and Lindsay, uh, has, he does backing vocals on it, too, so you've got them. Ray Cooper, we just talked about Ray Cooper, didn't we, with the Ravi Shankar. He's doing percussion on four tracks. Mick Fleetwood is on one track. And Eddie Quintella. Now, Eddie Quintella, he does keyboards for one track. Eddie will end up in Christine's world a lot more later, especially around the Fleetwood Mac time era, which, yeah, that is going to be a future Jukebox from L episode. You betcha. And then lastly, I did not know this, but Steve Winwood is on this thing. He is he is on one, two, three, no, one, two, three, four, four tracks. And he also, he, is play, he plays synthesizer on Gotta Hold On Me. So you have for one song, you have two members of Fleetwood Mac, Eric Clapton and Steve Winwood. So in essence, You've got two members of Fleetwood Mac and two members of Blind Faith. How about that, huh? Yeah, you didn't know that today, did you? You could maybe win a bar bet on that. Maybe. Got alliteration, yes. It's 19 right now to be in the 30s tomorrow, 50s midweek. Back to you, John, with the sports. All right. Part two to the title. I kind of gave it away some, didn't I? So, so Christine V. I know, thank you. You know what? I, I, like I said, I've heard a couple of these tracks. It's a nice album, damn it. And like I said, if it's really true that got a hold on me and uh, Love Will Show Us How were demos for Fleetwood Mac, they would that would have been two more hits. Two more hits in the catalog. So we said Songbird. The second part, the band played on 
Backstreet Crawler, that's right, 1975 on Atco. Here's the front, here's the back. Uh, you know, Paul Kossoff, oh my God. You know, but there's a man that he had the talent, right? He had the gift, and then he fucking wasted it. He did, okay? Yeah, that, thank you. I was just thinking about that. Al Sleek, your hippy dippy weatherman. You know, I'm sorry. I like blue Carlin, but I also like clean Carlin, okay? I like the Al Sleek. I like, um, oh my God, what's the other one? Uh, Indian Sergeant. Oh, God. Oh, that one made me roll the first time on that one. Oh, Lord. So, nobody really exactly uh, quite, you know, is lying up here. Mike Montgomery, Tony Ronagel, Terry Wilson, Slesser, Anna Terry Wilson. So, you have two Terry Wilson. This is confusing. And, of course, Paul Costa, produced by Backstreet Crawler. Um... Bunches of fun here, bunches of fun. But but out of all honesty, okay, uh, it says you're produced by Steve Smith. That can't be the same Steve Smith. Nah. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know any of the other side people that they got on here. But, you know, I'm trying to remember if this was the last album that, that Kossoff did because shortly like with less than a year after this was put out um he died in, in a in a uh, you know while flying to wherever and he died of a heart, of a heart thing but hey ernesto how are you fm am my cassette broke you know what cassettes tend to do that i had i had Amazingly enough, though, a few years back, I found some late 60s cassettes. You'd think that they would wear down. They still sounded decent. I was really surprised. I had, uh, what was it? I had I had a John Lennon Life with the Lions. I mean, let's face it, that, uh, that sucks, too. And um, McCartney's McCartney? An original. You know, when you had your cassettes back in the late 60s, anyway, they were slide outs, you know, like a matchbook cover, and it would slide out, and then you would take the take the cassette out. So, but I I ended up, you know, giving those to friends. All right, so that was your songbird with a backstreet crawler, right? Okay. Here's a little more. Um. Oh, yeah. One of these albums I'm not going to show you because it's going to be a future jukebox from hell episode. It's a request, actually. So I'm going to be showing you one of these. I've always said that Lennon should have done an EP in 80 called Single Fan. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I, uh, oh, I hate. Okay, I don't hate. Oh, yo, I don't hate Yoko. I hate the music. I don't hate Yoko. I met her once. I still I love tapes too, but here's the thing with the tapes. The only the only way that like if I find cassette tapes used, okay. Um the only ones I'll get are like hair metal, you know, that I can't find on vinyl or CD, if they even made a CD. You know, most a lot well shouldn't say most. A lot of them were vinyl cassettes. Those were your choices. They didn't even they didn't even make eight tracks, you know, by when the cassettes were popular. <sighs> Excuse me. Tapes of the cheapest media you can buy. Well, yeah, it is, too. I see, like, lots of people dumping those things. I have a, um, a resale shop. They don't get tapes very often, but when they do, they're like 25 or 50 cents. And, uh, you know, hey, why not? Yo, sure. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, that uh, what was it? Life, Life with the Lions. That Lennon one, I think, came out in 69. I said 69. But, you know, I mean, it survived for, I had it till at least 2019. So 50 years is pretty damn good, in my opinion, anyway. FM AM was my introduction on LP. Oh, yeah. Okay, you know, I may end up having a list of that. You know what? One of the weirdest things was the Friday, when he was on Fridays, and they did the, 
Oh my god, the terrorist radio? <laughs> I, I can't, it was like Middle East or something. I'm like, oh my god, this is too funny. All right, next album, 80s. You know, uh, yeah, this one here, I just noticed is slightly water damaged. Slightly. Yeah, I'm kind of down the spine. You know, I wonder if I could fix some of that. I, I, I wonder if you can kind of can make it lighter if it's worth it. Maybe not. Hey, Morton, how you doing? How are you? Good to see you. I saw one of your videos recently. I think I commented on it, but for the life of me, I'm sorry. I can't remember which one. Noggin's not working really well today, like it never is. The backstory of Life and Lines was that Yoko, yep, suffered a miscarriage, likely as a result of what? Well, I don't know about that part, but I'm not surprised. I do remember there was a lot of physicality in the early years of that marriage. And if I remember also correctly, that was with the Lions. They recorded before that baby died, the heartbeat. I'm like, that's a little unnerving to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of funny because I tripped on a couple George Carlin ones recently, actually. But uh, it wasn't no buck or two. That's why I didn't go get them. Uh, a decent copy of Class Clown. I remember that. Uh, anyways, Jeff Beck Flash. Okay, gold stamped. All right. Um... Like I said, unfortunately, there's a little bit of water damage going down the spine here. But, I mean, this is the album here that, you know, yeah, okay, 85, that's what I thought. Nice minty vinyl, by the way, though. Uh, but the thing is, with this, probably, Ernesto, probably. But you know what, though? Here's the thing. I am really honestly hoping that Julian and Sean can dampen down some of that over the next few years and and Sean's catalog will be improved. I think that could happen. Uh, yeah, your son is a fool, Mrs. Gar. But uh, we'll see. I mean, here's the thing. We'll talk about Record Store Day in a little bit, but that Sean Lennon EP to me, whoop de twang I saw what's on the track list of it. I ain't getting that. Ringo decided he wants to stick out an EP. Crooked Boy. Nice cover. I like the old shot. But I'm like, really? On Record Store Day? He's talking about going back to albums, by the way. Is that a threat or a promise or both? I don't hate yoga. Yeah, see, I, yeah, I dislike her. Like I said, I met her. She was short. And literally, I'm not, not attitude-wise. She was short. She was quiet. Um, I don't know. I can't say much. Like I said, the security people were around. I couldn't get, I could, obviously I didn't want to get close to her, but I did bring like a John Lennon and Yoko Ono 45 where they're pictured and I wanted Yoko to maybe sign it so I could have a Yoko autograph, but that just didn't work. Um, well, thanks. Like I said, it's, it's more down here. I, I don't know if you could see it exactly, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the vinyl's really nice. It really is for 85. So, you, you got a bunch of different guests on here, okay? Firstly, uh, various tracks are produced by Jeff Beck or Nile Rogers or both, all right? So, they're all in on this, mostly. Um, People Get Ready, of course, was the big single. Rod Stewart makes his appearance, right? So, Rod's on here. Jimmy Hall is on here, and if I remember correctly, wasn't Jimmy Hall and Wet Willie? So I didn't even know that those two had a connection. Um, and then Jeff Beck sings two tracks on here. So that's pretty much your singing production part. Then you have for musicians, Carmine Apache. Of course, he's on drums, very nice there. Um, Jan Hammer, he's on here too. That's no surprise either. Dwayne Hitchings, who he is, uh, let's see, The Image, uh, Alice Cooper, uh, he's been in a bunch of 70s stuff. Uh, Tony Hymas, uh, who also produces one of these tracks, he was in, in Jeff's band for a while. Niall Rogers even plays on here too. Curly Smith, who was the drummer for JoJo Gunn and Boston and for Monkey's Pooling. Yeah, he's also on a monkey tour. Yeah, he showed up for that one monkey, the Pula tour. He plays drums. 
and Doug Wimbish. And if I remember correctly, Doug Wimbish wasn't he in, in the band Living Color? I hope I'm getting that right. So you have all those people. And then you got for background vocals, like we brought up, Jimmy Hall. Um, that's the only one recognizable there. So, uh, all right. Neat, I think, anyway. Like I said, there's the front, there's the back for Jeff Beck. Oh, boy, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, that's all good, yes. I'm a good eight inches shorter than the lady, but everyone says we make a cute couple. Taller. I wish I was a foot, a foot taller. I wish I was a baller. Uh, you got it backwards, yes. Eight inches taller. Mickey Dones was at Meadowfet. He, he, he does look good, actually. I, I hope I, I met him once in 2010. I'd like to meet him again. Do you think Record Store Day is still interesting after all these years? We're going to talk about Record Store Day in a little bit, Ernesto, actually. Uh, might put my fucking two cents in on it, you know. Uh, opinions and assholes. Everyone's got one. All right, let's see. Like I said, I'm not going to show you this next one because that's going to be a jukebox from hell episode. Um, all right, how about this? Cassette store day. Man, you never know, but I, I, I don't hold your breath. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. And then uh, I got here, I thought this was pretty neat. I've got volume one, but this was in really decent shape on Autumn Records. You tell me why, don't talk to strangers. The Bull Brummels, volume two. Yes, the Bull Brummels, volume two. Here's the front, here's, here's the back with the cartoon of the Bull Brummels stones. Remember that from from Flintstones, and then um, really, really nice vinyl, seriously. Very nice vinyl. Um, and then, uh, of course, produced by Sly Stewart, a.k.a. Sly Stone. That's right, Sly Stone and the Family Stone produced this album. Yeah, he did a bunch of different things for Autumn Records. There, see, there's another bar that you can go off and tie slice stone to that. And then lastly for today, vinyl finds, anyway, uh, this one here, let me see if I'm going to get this right. I think I am. Uh, oh, well, that's cool. I did not know this was an art. Uh, uh, this one, unfortunately, is water damaged, but thank God I didn't pay too much for this. This was an RCA uh, Music Club edition. That's cool. That's cool. Um... On a and Records, oh yeah, the, well, the label, I could maybe fix a little bit of that. Thank God I didn't pay a lot. The vinyl isn't more dead, you can see the label. Thank God I only paid $2 each for these things. Uh, but Peter Franken wins have changed, that's right. Shortly after he left Humble Pie. Now, there's a lot of fun people on this one too. Not only, of course, with Peter Frampton, but you got Mike Kelly from Spooky Tooth. You got Ricky Ricky Wills on bass guitar. Who, of course, uh, Rick Wills was in a bunch of bands later being Foreigner. Um, oh, excuse me. Hang on a minute. Mickey Jones on rhythm guitar. Now, if I remember correctly, wasn't Mickey Jones? What band did Mickey Jones come from from the early seventies? Um, I don't know. I don't know on that. I'm sorry. And then you have a Beatle. You got a you got a Beatle on the last two tracks. The Lodger. You got the Lodger Ringo. They have a fabulous Ringo. Oh yes, he does drumming on here. Um, um, that one, and, oh, I apologize, I apologize, oh, no, it's still two tracks, and then, and then, All Right, which is what closes this album out, so for that one, you got Frampton, Ringo, Claus Vorman, and Billy Preston, all on this track for this, so, yeah, 
veto involvement. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know what? I don't think so. Uh, uh, no, uh, not yet. And Mickey Jones, and I'm trying to figure out. All right. Oh, very good. Well, you know what? Thanks about you. Oh, of course. Of course, I understand. When my mom got an LP cassette console and his little 77 said cassettes had the best sound. Guess he was told to push cassette. Well, yeah, I think they all were back then. But, you know, some people. <laughs> all right. You're funny. Some people. Um, I think some people, the audiophiles would say, really, that real to real, real to real and vinyl are your top two formats. But. You're not going to see a real to real day anytime soon. Uh, um, I I I owned a couple real to real tapes. Hell, I even had I even bought a real to real player at a church rummage sale. And you know, I kind of kicked myself in the ass. What was on the tape because it worked and I heard it was now this was get this McCarthy era communism okay so like remember when mccarthy was going after everybody in blacklisting it was that time and i don't know if it was a church group or some uh american legion or something but it was half funny for the attitudes that were taken in the early 1950s i should have saved that damn tape and like digitized it uh just for fun uh all right so let's see here I'm sorry, I'm still out of it. I, I really, I hope I, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I feel a lot better. I kind of feel bad because, um, um, sorry, hang on. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I'll feel better. Because I know I was supposed to get together with a friend today. I'm not going to tell you if why. It's a secret project for now. When it comes to fruition, I'll tell you. But it's secret. It's a secret. Not even secret squirrel. Oh, Morocco Mole. No of my plans. <laughs> See, secret squirrel. Secret squirrel and Morocco Mole. They do. And they are very expensive. You're right. They're very expensive to maintain. Uh, my my friend Doug Fields, who hosted the Body Body Radio Show, he's got a nice reel to reel. He's played a few things off of it. The only reel to reels I ever came across, dirt cheap, I did come across a Beatles once. It was the soundtrack to Hard Day's Night. I paid a quarter for it, turned around, and ended up selling that damn thing for about 50 bucks back in the 90s. Yeah, that was a nice payday. And then uh, I did find um, Simon and Garfunkel's uh, Sounds of Silence on Reel to Reel. That's the only rock ones I ever came across. Um, but let's see. I wrote some other things down, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Reel to Reel, though, before we get to that, Reel to Reel, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong on this, that pre-recorded reel-to-reel tapes, so in other words, like albums from the record company, um, the record clubs stopped selling reel-to-reel tapes. It was either in 1977 or 78. I want to say late 77, early 78. So imagine, if you will, if you ordered some of those albums, you know, like, for example, Led Zeppelin's Presence was out in 77. That one would probably be um, in 77. There was, let's see, there was no, there was no solo Beatle output. There was, what, Beatles love songs, but I highly doubt that got put on Real to real. I think it was a two LP set, wasn't it? So, I mean, that'd be a big pain in the ass. Uh, I'm trying to think here. What other, band, uh, what other big albums came out in 77, guys? I'm just trying to think here now, and I'm, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, Sab didn't put one out. Like I said, Zeppelin put out Presents. Um, Stones didn't put out one in 77. Hmm... 
I don't know. But needless to say, if you found any of those, they probably could command decent prices. It's just like we've talked about previously about 8-tracks and how to the regular public, the public that uh, December 31st, 1983, for the regular to go to record stores was shot. You couldn't, after that, you couldn't get any 8-track tapes through the record stores. Uh, after that, it was through Record Club Editions. That's right. So any 8-tracks from 84 to 88, if you ever find any 8-tracks, that's from, that's from record clubs. Seriously, your, your quantity will be reduced crazy. The last official 8-track, November 88, Fleetwood Mac's greatest hits on Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's true. Even my radio station here say, it brought it up the other day. Uh, and uh, and so, yeah. Martin, hi. Thanks to see you here. Always good to see all my people here. I got the best audience in the VC and you too. So, <laughs> maybe he is. Maybe he is with his girly. Nah, not yet. That's long distance. Oh boy, I'll call her back in a little bit. Anyways, so uh, yeah, so any any re any eight tracks that came out from eighty four to eighty eight record club editions, uh, I've never seen a Fleetwood Mac greatest hits hits um, eight track, but I will tell you what I did see. Uh, I did see these, and I had them in my hands. Hey, George Harrison's Cloud Nine was released on eight track through the record clubs, and Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction. Both of those were on a track. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? And I've never seen another copy of either since. I don't know what I would do if I did. Somebody went off and said, for example, that um, for Kiss, um, it's, it's either Crazy Nights or... Smack, smashes, thrashes, and hits might have also been on 8-track. I would tend to believe more that Crazy Nights would land on 8-track than smashes, thrashes. Actually, I saw Kenny Rogers from 1988. I'm Kenny Rogers, and this is Jackass. Oh, yeah. You ever seen that Mad TV sketch with Kenny Rogers, Jackass? Whenever I'm depressed, okay, which is semi-frequently, I will put that on both bits and they make me laugh. It's so stupid. And it's like, I ain't playing with the taser. This is the, this is the, you gotta catch the bat, the bat with your teeth. <laughs> so stupid. I see a Kenny Rogers. As long as you didn't play the 8-track tape player and then, like, it malfunctioned, because that would bring a new meaning to something's burning. All right. Uh, some talking points here. New albums coming out. Black Crows have got a new one. Happiness Bastards. That is the name of the title. Happiness Bastards. March 15th, that's coming out. Pearl Jam... I'll admit I haven't bought a Pearl Jam album since the top of Vital Vitalogy. I bought like the first three or four. I liked them. Then after that, not so much. But uh, Dark Matter is coming out April 19th. Uh, Neil Young and Pet Shop Boys not together. That would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? Uh, both of them will have separate albums April 26th. Some things to look forward to for you. Um, in a way, it's a nice story, but whoop de twang I'm already getting tired of hearing about Paul McCartney's uh, previously stolen Hoffner bass that was sto that was been missing since 1972, finally found in 2024, and back in McCartney's hands, that's right. But that bass 
uh, was around since the Hamburg day. So, I mean, that's a nice classic instrument right there, okay? Uh, let's see here. Brian Wilson. Supposedly, uh, this I, br I briefly saw the headline on this. Brian Wilson with a neur neurocognitive disorder. That is what's beneficial now. A neurocognitive disorder. I don't know any more than that. Hi there, Lisa. Lisa. And then we're going to touch on kind of one last topic before I shut this down. Because like I said, pretty much an hour is when I was going to close this up. Um, so RSD. People are already talking about RSD. They're asking. RSD, in my opinion... I think has become a bit much. It is it is kind of greedy. I think I don't really understand why the hell. Um, and I'll give you two examples. I'll give you two examples. Okay, I saw most of the list. I haven't seen all of it. Yes. Oh, and another thing. Excuse me. I just remembered. Also, please. Please pray for Mike Panera. Mike Panera has liver disease. We finally know that much. He has been hospitalized for a month. And he is, I am told, waiting for a liver transplant. So prayers to Mike Panera, formerly of Iron Butterfly, Alice Cooper, Classic Rock All-Stars, and a bunch of other fun. Okay? So... Pray for him as well. So, Brian and Mike. But, um, so RSD. I'm really kind of sick and tired of the limited quantities of titles that you know damn well are going to be very popular. There is a strong fan base. And yet, there's only 2,000 copies worldwide. And you... you and I got to admit, somebody brought this up in the in the VC because I tripped on this. And forgive me, I don't remember what video. But in the comment, he basically stated that this was more like a cat and mouse game and he wasn't going to play it. And I got to agree with him wholeheartedly. Okay, I think it's bullshit. I really do. Um, I'm hoping... I don't know. It, it, part of the problem, of course, is the record flippers, okay? That's part of your problem right there. For example, when I went to go get that Eric Carr Rockology picture, uh, not the picture disc, the vinyl, because then the picture disc came out, and I thought I had it in for the picture disc through a record store I knew near Syracuse, New York, but something happened. They were disqualified from RSD, even though they were an independent store. I don't understand how you could get disqualified. But it didn't happen. So the two titles, I'm going to give you examples. The two titles that I am looking for for RSD. Eric Carr. Now, they are putting out a 2LP. So this is a 2LP I am led to believe this is a 2LP box set. Now, why is it a box set? There's poster in there, there's something else in there, and then two albums. Basically, it is your Eric Carr, the, all the demos, five unreleased demos that are in this box set. I kind of want it. I do. I, I'm a KISS fan. I like Eric Carr. I think he should have done more for KISS. Whatever. I think he should have also been able to do a solo album before he died too, but he didn't. And on some of these, Bruce Kulick is on there too. So you get half of 80s KISS is on some of these demos. Because Bruce supported him very much. Um... My friend's making meatloaf. Ask me if I if there's any left, and I want you betcha. Psycho likes good meatloaf. So that was one of them. Now the second item, you long watch fans, 
are going to know exactly what my second choice here is. Friday Music, 2,000 copies worldwide. The reissue of the April 1968 Birds, Bees, and Monkeys in mono. That is the only reason why that I want that damn album. And it's in coral colored vinyl, okay? Which I, what's, is coral pink? Is that what it is? Is coral color pink? I, that's the first thing that's coming to my mind. Answer in the comments, please. So, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, I really want an OG Cold Gems. I'm, I'm going to want an OG Cold Gems until I'm dead because that's one of my grails. In fact, that's my big monkey grail along with, for 45, I am looking for the Oh My My Cold Gems 45 and Picture Sleeve. That Picture Sleeve is a tough SOB. That 45 is only marginally less rare. But that picture sleeve, I've only seen it in photos. I have never physically seen the 45 or... It. Hang on. But, um, so the thing is, um, so 2,000 copies, that's it. And you know damn well that there's more than 2,000 monkey fans out there. You can't tell me that that thing wouldn't sell if they put it at five or 10,000 copies. You can't, okay? I don't understand what the constriction is on some of this stuff, all right? I don't know if it's the record company or RSD or is like certain legalese involved in regards to reissues. Now, new product, new archival product would be a different story, I would think. But come on, man, as Joe Mayo would say, 2,000 copies, so that's the only things I really want for Record Store Day. I'm not going to hold my breath. If I find them, I find them. If I don't, I don't. Am I going to go early? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. If I feel up to it. I'm not going to, you know, I'll get, I won't find out till the day of. And then even then, we don't even know. I almost have to be like one of the first, ooh, ten people in line for me to have a shot at it. And I need to go give my record store guy a call anyway to see if I can suggest getting these things. I'm gonna try to have a secondary and a third option hopefully too, but I ain't gonna hold my breath on that either. But yes, so I'm trying to think, was there anything else that I needed to bring up? Oh, there is one other thing. This is kind of weird. I tripped on this today uh, in music news. So, are you a big fan of Emerson, Lake and Palmer? But before we get to that, quick commercial. Season 4, season premiere episode of Jukebox from Hell dropped earlier in the week. Episode 1 of uh, the first season, a.k.a. episode 31 for your scorecards. I went and reviewed the 1978 Emerson, Lake and Palmer album, Love Beach. It is our first episode for Jukebox from Hell for Season 4. Episode 2, which will be shot later this week, the 1980 album from the Knack, requested, but little girls understand. That's right, the second LP from the Knack. No My Sharona here, that's for sure. But, back to ELP. So, there has been... Mm, media, there's been press, and it says Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, 50th anniversary, the return of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Now, I know you're like, well, wait a damn minute. How could that be possible? And Keith Emerson died in April 2016, and Greg Lake died in December 2016. 
So how the heck can you go off and pull a, re, a return a BLP? That's a very good question. So here's how this works. Carl Palmer talked about this in an interview. Yes, so Carl Palmer is going out on the road. I think it's going to be, um, I, I don't know if it's select shows or, or just a short tour. I don't know how this works. Before you ask, it, there is no holograms here, okay? No holograph nonsense. You're not going to have to deal with that. They actually test ran that, and it did not it look good, Carl said. And not only that, it was creepy looking. And so they abandoned that idea. So what you're going to get if you go to these Emerson, Lake, and Palmer shows is you will have Carl Palmer on drums live, and you will also have his current um emerson lake the carl palmer emerson lake palmer legacy band is going to be joining on this now saying that on the screens okay they recorded the band did back in 92 and if i remember correctly i want to i don't know if it was japan but but they re they recorded two shows audio and film Okay, audio and video from the Black Moon Tour of 92. What they did, the engineers and producers and such, and AI, they took out the drum tracks. You And there's going to be screens. So you're going to see Keith Emerson and Greg Lake. You're going to hear those live vocal keyboard bass parts all that stuff you know from the live thing on screen and running into the sound system as carl's playing it live along with the band that's how they're doing it and ai what i am told was used not only to isolate and remove the drum tracks just for these shows because i'm told after the tour that they'll release the 92 live DVD down the line, which I think that'll be cool. But the AI is also supposedly being used to um, freshen up the 92 concert film because there is little quirks in there. And supposedly it smooths over 95% of it. So... I don't know if you're, you know, I mean, let's face it. I like Carl Palmer. He's a beast. He's a beast on drums. I saw him in 2019. He kicked ass. He kicked ass for the ELP Legacy, and he kicked ass for Asia, which was on that same tour date. And he did a great job uh, with both of them. So if you're an Emerson Lake and Palmer fan, you know, you will enjoy that thoroughly. That is pretty much, I think, Everything that I happen to have on my little plan here. Um, remember, ladies and gentlemen, to like and subscribe, Psychos Platters, if you haven't already. There will be some interesting things coming this year. We're still in the works on it. Several different projects. Yeah, to enhance this channel, not with AI, but to <laughs> enhance this channel and make it better for you guys. Because you know what? I love doing this for you guys. I do it for me too, but it's mostly for you guys. And uh, it's fun. I like doing this and I love it when you people watch live or when you watch it later. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just glad you watch and you take your time out to watch, okay? I've noticed out of curiosity that my my watch times, so there's a lot of people watching. I, I can tell based on that. Um, and I've got new, new people every week it seems like now which is nice I'm, I'm glad that everybody's coming together um i will let's see quick announcement now this is maybe uh we'll say 50 50 chance okay that's mighty psycho may be making a appearance at a record show myself the mighty psycho and doug feels the host of the vinyl grotto barring anything stupid and weather related we may make an appearance March 2nd, which is a Saturday at Carthage, Missouri, which is near Joplin, Missouri. So anybody in the Joplin, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, 
Northwest Arkansas, Western, uh, excuse me, Eastern Oklahoma, uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas is not too far away from Carthage. Anybody in those areas, four state record show, come out and maybe buy, it's five bucks to get in. It's all day, uh, nine to three, excuse me, but it's all day pretty much. Uh, and they and they just officially yesterday filled all the dealer spots. This thing is going to be crammed. One of those dealers is John Humphrey, the drummer of Seether. That's right. So I'm hoping to bring some Seether CD covers to maybe and maybe shoot the shit with him. Maybe get some autographs there too, and could possibly do something with. Psycho a later date, that'd be nice. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but still. All right, so we hit an hour. Perfect timing, I appreciate. I had what, about seven, eight people. I know, there's, uh, what is it, Mayo's still on, I think? I'm gonna catch up with Mayo. I might try to go on there in a little bit, but I gotta make a phone call first. So, I want everybody to have a kick-ass uh, week. I am hopefully, like I said, Jukebox from Hell, episode uh, 32, will be out this week also. Um, I'm not going to promise. I may or may not do a broadcast Wednesday. We will shoot for it. Um, but other than that, that's about it, gang. So, you know what? I love you guys. Uh, always remember that you can put your jukebox from hell requests in the comments or if you want to directly message me through internet of course it'll be www.smallcase letters for this p-s-y-k-o underscore dj at yahoo.com so psycho underscore dj at yahoo.com will put you directly to me i already have a handful of different people that communicate with me via email and I don't mind doing that whatsoever. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And if you happen to know a decently priced original mono birds, bees, monkeys on cold gems, I'm looking for that. All right. Take care. God bless. Rock on. And uh, you know what? Be good to yourself, okay? And be good to everybody else, too. Be kind as best as you can, all right? Bye. Remember... Always part of the coffee, each and every time.